want a handprint. A what? Handprint? A handprint? Why would you want a handprint? It's just funny. You have turkey handprint. On the back. You want a turkey? I actually have a tramp That'd stamp. That'd be funny. You do not know that. Really? Shut up. It's a handlebar. You have a handlebar tramp stamp? <laughs> I don't. I do not have one. I don't. No. I'm not lifting up my shirt to my backside to the camera. I don't have one. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and really tech related Gen 2. I'm your host, Garrett Bevins, and I'm excited you're watching us. Now, it's time for us to watch this week's gaming release highlights. Lunasys is a 3D platformer created with simple and fun gameplay and a cute PlayStation 1 Sega Saturn inspired art style in mind. Take the will of Hana, the Tanuki, and jump and fight through her dreams. Explore the different dreamscapes to guide her to her final destination, the moon, and try to uncover the secrets of the Lunasys along the way. Lunasys releases on November 10th for PC and Switch. In the wake of catastrophe, you must find the means to make your family whole again. Somerville is a sci-fi adventure grounded in the intimate repercussions of a large-scale conflict. Immerse yourself in a handcrafted, narrative experience set across a vivid rural landscape. Navigate your way through the perilous terrain ahead of you to unravel the mystery of Earth's visitors. Somerville releases on November 15th for PC and Xbox consoles. Those are the gaming release highlights for this week. You can check those out in the description below. Also, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to KNWT to not miss any episodes of Gen 2. Next up, some gaming packs. Welcome back to The Rundown, I'm your host Garrett, and today we look into an underrated first person shooter in which we hang him high and shoot from the hip with Call of Juarez Gunslinger. In Call of Juarez Gunslinger you play as Silas Greaves, a drifting cowboy who finds himself in a dusty saloon in Kansas. From there, a young fan identifies Silas and asks him to tell as many stories from bounty hunting to just living in the old west. From there, Silas reminisces over his long and tough past, and his goal to take revenge on a man named Bob. Silas is quite a funny character. His dry wit and stereotypical tough cowboy talk makes it a joy to play as him. However, uh, his memory isn't as good as it used to be, as he claims to take on multiple legends of the West. Only to flip the script last minute and completely change the outcome and the gameplay as well. Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? Truth be told, Silas actually did fight these Old West legends, from the dangerous John Wesley Harding to everyone's Huckleberry, Johnny Ringo. The game even has a cool pulp comic book-like way of designing its characters and environments. For instance, if you take damage in the game, bullet holes will like rip through paper on the screen, which I'm kind of a big fan of. Now that's enough talk, we gotta take action with the gameplay up next. Now I would like to call Call of War as a popcorn arcade shooter. Let me explain. As you run and gun down your enemies, techs and points will fly off their shot bodies, adding to a combo meter and a score at the very end of the level. Of course, since it's such a cool feature to include in a game, you yet again have a slow motion power that makes you so much better. Heck, if you take too much damage in a game, an enemy shooting at you will slow down and give you time to somehow dodge a bullet and fire back. Now, it wouldn't be a western cowboy video game if it wasn't for a mono e mono clash in a duel. The game has a cool way of doing this, with one of your joysticks controlling the focus on the enemy and the other joystick controlling the speed of your draw. Just make sure to keep your eyes on his hands so you don't draw first looking like a coward. While tearing up the Wild West, you can also level up. These upgrades can give you golden and more powerful guns as well as cool abilities like dual wielding pistols. While a campaign is brief, you still have two more game modes for your root and toot and trigger finger. To a small arcade game mode in which you have a preset class, maybe a rifle and a shotgun with a pair of pistols, in which you clean out a level as quickly as possible, to a gauntlet of face-off duels. 
you will battle every big bad guy in the game and see how far you can get on five lives. Just remember, speed is in fact key. That does it for this week here on The Rundown, and that was Call of Juarez Gunslinger. As I said, a highly underrated first person shooter. If you want to see more, check out the other shows we have here on KNWT Channel 8. I'm signing off. Have a good one. Unlike other organizations on and around campus, here, the students do it all. KWT is a student-run and student-produced television station. To support this content and Northwest Media students, you can go to our YouTube channel at KWT Channel 8 and watch the latest shows or even enjoy blasts from the past. All right, guys, let me tell you this. I got tats over the break, and I absolutely love them. Look at this. Gen 2 forever. Come on now. I mean, I got it for the show. I mean, I love it to death. Uh, other ones, I have a tractor on my hand, because, you know, from a rural community. Uh, my right bicep, I have a windmill, because, you know, Nottaway County. Dude, there's, like, windmills everywhere here. Uh, a farmer, and I have a lot of ducks. I like ducks a lot. Like, I really, really like ducks. I have a pig as well and a really bad eggplant. I'm kind of mad at my uh, artist for that, but other than that, I really like them. Like, as always, Gen 2, forever. Hey guys, my name is Lauren Liberty, and welcome to Lauren's esoteric dive into games she enjoyed playing as a child and presents it to our audience, or the really easy to remember acronym, Ladixipa Capita. <laughs> As a kid, I remember it was fairly common that I didn't really play games correctly. I kind of just did what I wanted, made up my own stories in my head, because the actual game was too hard. One of those games that I remember and loved to a point was Mercenary's Playground of Destruction. <laughs> Now I definitely don't remember a lot from this game when I started it up, other than the fact that it's open world, you could go fight people anytime you want, and you could call in a bunch of different items and such to help you. For the story, the game takes place in North Korea, where General Choi Song stages a barbaric coup against his father. Some years later, Australia discovers a North Korean ship in distress. However, they also discover its load of nuclear weapons, destined for known terrorist forces, sparking an allied nation's invasion to destroy Song's regime. The allies successfully seize Song's nuclear missile silos, but they soon discover another launch point, the location of which is unknown. Desperate to find the silos, the allied nations places bounties on North Korean businessmen, ranking officers, weapon scientists, General Song's personal bodyguard, and Song himself, all organized with a deck of cards. The mercenary has the option of apprehending or murdering members of the deck, albeit killing them only awards the player of half the bounty. The bounty grows in proportion to the member's significance all the way up to General Song, who is listed at $100 million. Prior to entering the game, the player is offered an option of choosing one of three mercenaries. Of course I chose the mercenary that is voiced by Jennifer Hale, one of my favorite voice actors of all time, and voices one of my favorite characters of all time in Mass Effect, Gem Shep. The option has little effect on the storyline, but each character has slightly different statistics and can speak a different language other than the English spoken by one of the game's four factions. The allied nations, South Korea, China, and the Russian Mafia are the four factions. Each group is concerned with a single goal that is influenced by the mercenaries' actions. The allies, for example, just want to remove Song, so its tasks are based around that. As the game goes on, China and South Korea become more and more at odds since they both want to take over North Korea. The Russian Mafia is only concerned with exploiting the crisis and establishing criminal operations, as well as providing guns that the mercenary may purchase. Completing assigned objectives for each faction provides the player with information on members of the deck of 52. By completing these optional tasks, the player acquires enough intelligence to unlock the ace contracts, 
would shift the theater of war halfway through the game from the southern providence to the northern providences. There are several different endings depending on the player's decisions. Furthermore, another report will inform you of the faction that took control of North Korea depending on who the player opted to aid the most. Something I find really unique about the game is one of the earliest open world games and one of the few war related open world games. By using the medium of being a mercenary, your character has no true alliance and is free to go and do whatever they want with the other factions in the game. You can become enemies with the factions if you go against their specific goal, which brings another level to the game where you're not only against North Korea. Overall, this game really is a gem, and I'm really glad I went back to it. I think it's fairly clever in how it's built, and Pandemic Studios did a great job while they were still alive before being bought by EA, the Facebook of gaming companies. But I still totally recommend it. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction really is a playground and lets you lose to complete the tasks in the game however you want. It does not control you much and encourages any playstyle with different endings. That's all the time I have this week on the Digs of the Capita. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next week. See ya! Hey guys, welcome back to Patty Plays here on Gen 2. I lied to you last week, I'm actually going back to a Fortnite update video this week instead of a Modern Warfare 2 gameplay video. In Fortnite's update 22.30, there have been a couple things that have been unvaulted. The first being the Pulse Rifle. The Pulse Rifle comes in rare, epic, and legendary rarities, or blue, purple, and gold versions. The rare or blue version of the Pulse Rifle does either 33 damage to the body or 49 depending on how far away you are from the enemy player. It also does 74 damage to the head. With a slow fire rate and a smaller magazine clip, holding only 16 bullets, it sure does pack a punch. The second item that was unbolted is the Junk Rift. The Junk Rift has come and gone quite a bit throughout the years of Fortnite, but is back once again and something's different this time. The Junk Rift is a throwable item that opens a rift in the sky and drops, you guessed it, a bunch of junk out of the sky to whoever you threw it hopefully onto enemy players or enemy buildings. In this update, it's not just any junk rift falling out of the sky. If you look closely, you can see Luke Skywalker's X-34 land speeder from Star Wars. This leads to the main theme of this update, Star Wars. Now Fortnite has done Star Wars collabs before, but never with Luke Skywalker. In the item shop, you can now purchase different outfits of Luke Skywalker, as well as his training remote that is used as a back bling, you can also use a Star Wars slug thrower rifle as a pickaxe and his land speeder as a glider. Along with the skins, across the map you can also find Luke Skywalker's lightsabers to use as a weapon or a defense item. You can attack with the lightsaber or you can block enemy shots with it. There are also quests you can do in game with these Star Wars weapons that will give you extra XP as you complete the quests. Along with adding Luke, they have also added his father back into the game, Darth Vader. You can challenge and fight Darth Vader, and if you eliminate him, which is pretty hard to do, you can also pick up his lightsaber to use as a weapon in game. The other Star Wars weapon that they added back into the game is the Stormtrooper's E-11 Blaster Rifle. These can be found on the ground or in chests. Fortnite also added Princess Leia as a character you can purchase in the item shop. There are three different styles of Princess Leia, and she also comes with an R2-D2 back bling and an Electro Staff pickaxe. And last but not least, for the Star Wars collab, they also added Han Solo as a character you can buy from the item shop. There are also three different versions of him, and he comes with his Millennium Falcon as a back bling and a Vibro Staff as a pickaxe. Other additions into this Fortnite update were the challenges to unlock the Herald character. Now the Herald is the pink alien lady, and she is the bad guy of this chapter. She is the one that is spreading the chrome around the map and trying to destroy the Fortnite island. If you complete 3 out of the 5 challenges, you can unlock her as a character to play in game. The last thing in this update is the unlockable chrome punk skin. The chrome punk skin is basically a shiny jack-o'-lantern that is unlocked by leveling up 50 levels by January 1st, 2023. Well folks, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next week. Northwest Missouri State University's four student media outlets, KNWT Television, KZLX LPFM, The Northwest Missourian, and Tower Yearbook have been ranked among the top in the nation for the College Media Association Pinnacle Awards. 
The Northwest Student Media Department takes pride in ensuring students are up to date on the latest technology, equipment, industry secrets, and offers profession-based learning experiences from day one. To support Northwest Student Media, check out our content on all of our platforms. This week on Channel 8 News, we'll be looking at Trump's final midterm campaign blitz, Northwest winning streak in volleyball and football, and more. For stories that matter to you, catch new episodes of Channel 8 News every Monday at 2 p.m. on our YouTube page at KNWT-TV. Hey guys, welcome back to Project Delta. I'm Lauren Liberty, the producer of Gen 2, and I'm here with... Garrett Bevins, the host of Gen 2. So today, we're playing some Thrillville minigames. Ever since I made a pack about Thrillville, Garrett over here has been saying that he could totally beat me in Thrillville minigames. And I know I can. I had this for the Wii as a kid, and my brother and I played it to death. And I feel pretty confident in my abilities, but we'll see what happens. I also played it a ton as a kid, and I've played it more recently, so I kind of have an advantage. Um, sure you do. So are you going to talk about the <laughs> stakes we have today here? So yeah, the stakes are actually somewhat pretty high, actually. If I were to, not were, if I win, excuse me, when I win, <laughs> I will take over the show of Gen 2, and uh. when she loses, I mean, she'll just have to do other things. But if I were to somehow lose, nothing really changes. She still yeah. stays in charge. He's trying to take over my show. So um, anyways, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm definitely going to win. So sure, Gen 2 is still mine. Sure, 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 sure. Whatever. And I'm the narrator to help structure this up a bit. So first round of minigames. We win for a Robo KO. Robo mm -hmm. KO first? Yep. Okay. A game where Garrett explicitly has bragged about for weeks how good he is at it. I originally thought about pitching, you know, take over the amusement park, because, you know, it's kind of an amusement park game. Yeah, but it's my computer. <laughs> you still, can't, I you mean... You gotta use my Steam... You, you get my exactly. Steam account okay of 200 games and? plus. Yeah, that's not fair. Well, I think it's fair. What? <laughs> clock. You chose I'm clock, too? Oh, shoot. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm on the left. Um... Oh, Mr. I'm so good at gaming. Mr. Ah! Okay. Dang. First round goes to me! Let's sure. go! Sure, sure, sure. Actually, right. so bad. <laughs> However, his uh, boasting is quickly defeated as he loses all three boxing rounds. You're rounds. almost dead, and I am truly triumphant. In sure. You said that you were definitely going to beat me in this one. I thought I did. I would. And I just beat you three rounds I in know. a row. <laughs> well, Actually, fine. I wonder what my total score is. Probably gonna be like a one. Like a, Dude, I almost. Ooh, oh wait, I'm the other two. I now here's some intermission test pool we did for absolutely no reason. So uh, we'll be back to check on that game throughout. Wanting to switch things up, we decided to go to first person shooter and chose the pirate version. I did not hit you. Oh my gosh, this weapon sucks. After lots of complaining about the sensitivity, Garrett found a gun that one-shots you. Oh, <laughs> tie it up. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm no, why would you tie gun. it up? With I'm keeping this gun on me. Holy moly. Due to this, he dominated the second game. I, of course, threw in lots of cheating accusations. It's You're true. screen peeking, <laughs> screen peeking, actually cheating. It's not cheating, it's just, you know, using <laughs> resources. What Stop. No, you literally. <laughs> actually ah. cheating, actually, actually cheating, actually cheating, actually cheating, what? actually cheating. so bad. I like how okay. I got a better score, and guess what, guys? We're all tied up. It's now 1-1. One, one. Now, go. let's go back to that pool cam. How is it doing? Go for the eight ball. Shut up. Just saying. Nice. We also wanted to play a fairly normal game uh -oh. of speed oh, mini golf. Uh, okay, whatever. This is be dumb. Oh, there we go. I made it up. I made up for it. I made up for it. Come on now. Okay, come on. Whatever. I'm so good at mini golf. I'm cracked, actually. 
not really, but you know, it's fine. Yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> what is this? Garrett, uh, got out almost immediately, so uh, I ended up giving up because I already beat him. So why? I don't want to keep playing. I don't want to keep playing, so I'm just having fun because um, I already won. So why even keep playing? Anyways, and now it is 2-1. Two 2-1. One. Two one. Great, great, great. <clears throat> we got three games down. First to five. I, it's okay. We're doing great. Um, pool cam. Da, 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 da. Epic. Now, we wanted to play the coolest game, Bandito Chinchilla. Um, I'm drifting. I'm drifting. I'm drifting. I'm drifting. Hey, I'm drifting. What? Ooh. That was garbage. You're actually you're cheat using on, cheat codes. You're getting styled on. There were some uh, pathetic moves. Uh, it was a struggle at times for both sides. Ooh. Oh, you slide. Okay. Good to know. Jump. Yeah, the slide does attack, but you gotta hit him. <laughs> like that. That was good timing. Anyways, no. Ah! <laughs> this is so good. You're so good at this game. Why are you running, man? Gotcha! Run. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I clutched it in the end. Gotcha. <laughs> that was the best. Ending oh. shot. That was skill. That was skill from my part. Can't Actually. be mad. Can't be mad. That was a good one. <laughs> oh. Almost beat Bonga. Now the score is 3-1. Dang, it's kind of good a pool. Garrett chose trampolines, confident the once again. I, the last time the uh, golf game went, it wasn't really fun. We'll do space. Space. So, it's so beautiful. The elegance. The elegance. Story. Story. Why? Why? I love space. Oh shoot, I just ate it. <laughs> Get up! Come on now. We got winning to do. However, despite usually getting an early lead, he was not racking up the level of points needed. Oh, whoops, that was a mess up. Miss input, miss input! <laughs> you calm down! Oh god. And the last one. We're both getting a way higher score. Also. <laughs> Don't look at the scores. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's double your score. <laughs> yeah, I got double the points. Still going strong. Well, I have one ball left, Lauren. Wait, you actually do? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Okay. Back to us. Intense. So close. This literally is intense. Oh, I died. I'm freaking out. You're already dying? Garrett. It's just started. I know. But. Oh, I'm dying again. Okay, I'm dead again, apparently, too. All right. Well, You've I'm... lost three lives. <clears throat> okay, I just died. I shouldn't oh. have said much. <laughs> Stinks to stink, huh? As I blow up and die and might possibly leave. You are winning, actually, by a bit. I am out of lives. But you are out of lives. So we have a 5-1 win. Okay, nice. But, uh, this has been boring. Almost as boring as this pool game. So let's heighten the stakes. All or nothing, Sparkle Island Classic. Oh, All or nothing, whoever does Sparkle, this yep. becomes producer. Is a producer. Gotcha. <laughs> this is so stupid. I hate this game. Why? All right, now okay, now okay. I know what to do. So we did first a win, five rounds Dude. wins everything. Get up. Get, get up! I got that oh, one. Okay. Watched it. And you can maybe already guess how it goes. So dumb. <laughs> oh. I have three one, three one, all or nothing. Come on, you gotta make it back. Trying. Two more opportunities. Ooh. Oh no, he's stuck up there. What? He's stuck in the top. No! Shoot, 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 shoot. No, 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 yes! We all have.
I'm not. I need to get one. Okay, oh. right, you gotta win one more time. Oh my gosh, he's stuck again. No! You won that he's one. Stuck. No, it's so sad when they get stuck. Okay. So it's 4 3. Come on, I just gotta win one. Crush. So stressful. <laughs> just keep beating. How do you have six? Oh my gosh, get hit. No! Go. That get was up. garbage! Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! No! I won. I won. I won the all or nothing. Okay. I am the producer of Gen 2. You don't get to take it from me. No hit. I was. I was just, I'm super stressed. Good game. Um, that obviously proves I'm the best producer ever. That's what this proved. It does? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that was actually very stressful. I'm not gonna lie. That was really <laughs> stressful. That, that all or nothing was really stressful. That was very stressful. <laughs> so, what have we learned? That Lord Liberty is the greatest gamer and producer to ever exist? I'll let you come to that conclusion on your own. Also, pool is boring to watch. That was so much fun, guys. I want to do that again. I I really enjoyed showing that I am the better gamer, the better producer, the better everything than Garrett over here. I had a fun time. That's all that matters. All that mattered to me is winning. Was she's winning. Uh, very petty like that. I'm not actually petty. <laughs> I know. I'm not actually petty. Um. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching us. Uh, I Play some Thrillville mini games. I had a lot of fun doing it, actually. I had a yeah, lot of fun. that was Other a lot of fun. Losing a lot, but yeah, you know, maybe get life. good. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate. It. I'm trying, okay. Okay. See you guys next week. Bye. See you guys. Oh, hey. Sorry. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gen 2 and my tattoos, which have turned out quite nicely. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell not to miss the rest of this season's episodes. Thanks for all the support, and we'll see you next week on Gen 2. Now go check out the other episodes on Gen 2 or one of the other shows on KNWT. And who said Tata Boys aren't hot? Come on now. <laughs> Press down on that. Hi, Blake. <laughs> this is what I'm going for. What? Because they're going on your face? No. 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 Hey, you like my uh, eggplant? <laughs>